So um, as, uh, as Ed mentioned, I'm uh, Divakar Vyas. Uh, I'm an assistant professor in the Animal Sciences Department at the University of Florida. And we were discussing about weather. So I think nothing can compare with the Florida heat and humidity. Um, ours is 92 degrees with 55% humidity. We will take it any day. So this is, this is such, a, such a good weather for us in Florida at this, uh, this time of the year. Um, the, the focus of my talk uh, will be again, uh, it's a circular uh, circularity, the integrated crop and livestock production. And my focus uh, will be on the feed uh, innovations and, and, and the feeding management. So before we uh, dig deep into the feeding management, uh, I think it is very important to just clear some of the concepts on the linear economy and the circular economy. And again, I, I would like to thank Mahmoud uh, for sharing the uh, first few slides uh, introducing uh, these topics. So this is the figure uh, uh, that shows what the linear economy is. And, um, and you can see from this figure is that uh, there are a couple of very big assumptions on, uh, on the linear economy. Is that first of all, it has infinite resources. So the assumption is that we can make use of these resources as much as we can and the resources will not deplete. Okay, And, and the second assumption is that we have infinite regenerative capacity of the earth. So that means that it doesn't matter how much waste we generate from this system, there's always a way to dispose that waste uh, and the earth has a regenerative capacity. Now, just even thinking about this idea, we know that you know these assumptions are too broad and these assumptions actually are not real world assumptions, right? Because the resources are finite and the regenerative capacity of earth is finite. So. Now let's move on uh, to the concept of uh, circular economy. So when we, when we add this circular concept in this economy, now what we are doing is that we are not only just focusing on the economic growth, we are also paying equal attention to how we are using our resources and especially these natural resources that are very finite. And also how efficiently our inputs are being used in any system we use. I mean, in, uh, for, for today's webinar, we'll be focusing on the crop and livestock production systems. But in any systems, if we are trying to use that circular, circular economy, then I think it's very important for us to understand how efficiently we are using these resources and these inputs. So the assumptions, so what we do in circular economy, what is being accomplished is that the resource consumption is greater than resource extraction. So what that means is that once we have extracted any natural resources, for example, we try to consume it as many times as possible, rather than just using it once, disposing it, and then going back to resources again. Okay. So that means we are reusing it, we are recycling it, we are extending the shelf life, we are extending the, the, the life of that product. In whichever way we do, we are just increasing the resource consumption compared with the resource extraction. And second thing is the end life of the product. Now, the environmental capacity of waste disposal is, is greater in the circular economy as compared to waste production. So there are ways in this economy that we can reuse that waste so that we do not dump that waste just after one use. And again, going forward on that on the circular economy concept, this is a system in which the leakage of raw inputs, energy, waste, and emissions are minimized. Okay, I mean, in an ideal world, if we think about circular economy, there will be zero waste. But we know in the real life, in the real world situations, um, we have a lot of wastages. Um, in the crop and the livestock production. So our efforts are to minimize these waste, whether these are you know, the resources, these are energy that is being used, the waste products that are being generated, the emissions, like a lot of emphasis has been given on greenhouse gas emissions. And again, that's a waste product coming from, uh, coming from the feed fermentation in the livestock. And this economy is again achieved by long lasting design, maintenance, repair, reuse, sharing, manufacturing, remanufacturing, refurbishing and recycling activities. What this means is very clear from this graph. This is from Ellen MacArthur Foundation, where they have actually put this entire concept of circular economy into these two areas of biological aspects and the technical aspects. If you look on the left hand side here, um, all the green area is, is a biological 
uh, aspects of the economy and all the right hand side area, which is blue in color, which is a technical uh, technical uh, materials. So when I when we when we discuss about the biological materials that is on the green side of of this chart, these are the materials that can safely re-enter the natural world, and once they have gone through one or more cycle, okay, and the 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 point that differentiates them from the technical materials is that they these natural materials will biodegrade okay so our focus is on making sure that we can biodegrade these materials when these are used in the economy and on the right hand side we have technical materials that is in blue color and these are the materials like plastic like metals like synthetic chemicals they cannot be re, uh, they cannot be degraded naturally so our focus is on how we can reuse it more uh, so that we do not just use it once, dispose it and go back to creating more plastics. Like all the marketplaces that we have like eBay, we make sure that one product is being used again and again before it is disposed of. Okay, um, We try to make sure that the products that are synthesized um, plastic materials or steels or chemical fertilizer or, or chemical materials they are used in such a way that we can extend the life of those products. And again, these are the component of the circular economy. So when we say circular bioeconomy, it not only produces and supplies food and other byproduct, but also regenerates natural resources, minimizes losses and waste, and mitigates the environmental impact of byproduct and supply chains. Now, if we put this concept in, in, in the livestock production, so what we are focusing on is that we need to identify, characterize, and exploit bioresources or byproducts that can go to livestock feed chain and they can be utilized more efficiently than what they have been done right now. Okay, And this is what the focus of my next few slides will be. This is the data that came out of UC Davis and this shows what kind of livestock diets we are using for our, for our mostly for the ruminant animals, like dairy cattle, beef cattle, sheep, goat, deer. And you can see that most of these ingredients that are shown in the spy chart, that is silages, byproducts, hays, 36% silage, 39% byproducts, and 12% hay, that's what constitutes their diet. And most of this, we are not competing with humans. These animals are not competing with humans. And again, the take home from this slide is that there are 39% of the feed is coming from byproducts. And what are these byproducts? These byproducts are any waste that is coming out of industries. For example, from the brewery industry, we are getting brewer's grains. From the ethanol industry, we are getting distillers grains. From the orange industry, we are getting, uh, we are getting citrus pulp. Soybean industry, soybean meal. So all of these byproducts are being added to the diet. And these are actually the part of circular economy. So we have been working on that since past so many decades in terms of the diet formulation for the livestock. Now, the focus here is that can we improve that? And the answer is definitely yes. You know, we can always push this system to make sure that we can actually increase the use of these byproducts that goes into the diet of our livestock. So what are these different aspects of the feed management that are focused on circular economy? So the first point, as I mentioned in the previous slide, is the use of byproducts. Okay? There are some agricultural residues, food waste, industrial byproducts that has not been used uh, in any other way. Can we increase the utilization of some of these waste products by using them in the diet for our livestock? And if we can do that, and actually, we are creating this circularity in the livestock production systems. There's a data that came out in Nature in 2023, and they have shown that if we can increase the byproduct utilization by even 15%, we will be able to conserve land, arable land, by 25 million hectares. Okay? And that land will be available for the, for the other use purposes, like you know, growing crops. So again, this is a very, very important area. We need more data, we need more research because there are so many waste products being generated. Can they be used for the livestock feeds? For that, we need more data on what kind of quality of the feed it is. Now, second area uh, is technological innovations. We are very well aware of the anaerobic digesters. 
So all the manure that goes in, how that can be utilized for the generation of methane and that can be used for the power generation. There's another area which I would like uh, you to point attention is insect farming. Black soldier larva has been, has been gaining a lot of traction since last five to six years because that is a sustainable source of protein that can be, that can be used for our livestock. What some of the research that we are focused on are using the waste products from this black soldier larvae. And I'll just give an example. There's a company called EnviroFlight. And these, uh, th this company, they grow Enviro oil, as you can see on the screen, and Enviro meal. Enviro oil is a very high quality lipid product that is used for monogastrics, that is used for poultry. And Enviro meal is a very high quality protein uh, that is used for monogastrics. However, these two feeds are very expensive and I cannot expect that my producer who raises sheep, goat, dairy cattle, beef cattle will be able to spend that much and feed Enviro meal or Enviro oil. So our focus was on how we can use a waste product and the waste product that comes out from this industry is Enviro frost that is in the middle um, of, 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 uh, of this, uh, of this uh, picture. Now, right now, they have no use of Envirofrost in the feeding. What the experiments that we did was to evaluate whether Envirofrost can be used for sheep diets by replacing soybean meal because it has a lot of like 25 to 26 percent crude protein. That kind of research is needed okay? because if we know that these are some waste products coming from the industry, they're not being used in the diet. Can we do some sort of research based interventions where we can optimize inclusion of these waste products. The third area is ration formulation. There is a lot of things that we can do with ration formulation. First is feed additives. In my previous introductory slide, I mentioned that there are some losses in terms of emissions, like greenhouse gases. Now we have feed additives available in the market and actually a couple of weeks back, there's a feed additive called Bovair or 3-nitroxypropanol that was approved to be used in the livestock diets. Now, this feed additive can reduce greenhouse gas emissions. And this is the data that I'm showing you from my postdoc work. On the x-axis here, we have um, uh, the time post-feeding. And so when I, it's, it's 30 is half an hour after feeding, and then all the way to 24 hours after feeding. And on the y-axis, we have methane emissions. And again, methane is a loss of energy. These are greenhouse gases. We can see that um, this treatment where this feed additive called 3 nitroxypropanol or Bovair is a commercial form, when this is included in the diet of these beef cattle, the methane emissions is very close to zero. So there are feed additives that can be, that can be used to reduce emissions, that can be used to reduce all the waste that these, our, our livestock can produce. Now the challenge is how do we optimize that, right? How do we how do we make sure that these are economically feasible? Last but not the least is policy framework. We need we need incentives for the sustainable practices. We need more standards. We need for certifications, because whenever I present any data on the feed additives reducing methane, producer will come to me and ask, okay, what is in it for me? If if there is no improvement in the performance. Why do I include that feed additive? Yes, definitely, they, they care about greenhouse gases, they care about climate change, but then if it's not showing them any economic return, then why will they use it? So in that case, there should be some incentives needed for sustainable practices. And we need more standards, we need more certifications that shows that yes, the producer has been using some feed additives that are more sustainable, and that goes with the circular economy concept. Do we have challenges? Definitely, a lot of challenges. Um, what are the potential of alternative feed resources? I can easily say that, yes, there are some feed resources that should be used, but is it even rational to think that some of these waste products can be used for livestock feed? Okay, so we need more data on that uh, to, to optimize the inclusion of these feed ingredients. Um, how do we make convince our producers to transition from traditional to new agricultural system. How do I convince my producer not to use soybean meal and use a black soldier larvae meal? And again, that's a big challenge. When we think about circular economy, what is my scale? Farm, region, country, at what scale should I use? And again, the market opportunities for carbon credit. So 
lot of challenges in the system. However, um, it, it is more there's more optimism here that yes, we can do that because we have been working with these concepts since I would say last you know 10 to 15 years without even knowing that these are more sustainable options. So I really hope that in future we generate more data and we can support this entire system, crop and livestock production system uh, in, in, in perspective of a circular economy. So with that, uh, I will wrap up my presentation and uh, I understand that I'm completely out of my time. So I will uh, request Mahmood uh, to please continue his presentation.